So the topic today is one that we're really passionate about and have, uh, sorry, excuse the dog in the background. Um, the topic today is around annual reviews, which is something that at ICON we have spent a lot of time working with advisors and trying to really get the best way in which we can assist advisors in doing this properly. Um, today we'll, we'll really illustrate the importance of doing annual reviews and not just the importance, because I suppose uh, at, at its core, you know, you know why it's necessary. But the reality is, is that a lot of advisors do put it off and uh, often prioritize their, their kind of bigger high net worth clients. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we're gonna take you through some examples of how you can actually really generate some practice value and make the most of an opportunity that might just be sitting there um, with, with not much being done about it. And um, so without further ado, I'll quickly introduce you to our panelists. It's going to be three of us chatting today. I'm just going to do a very brief uh, introduction for those of you who might be new to ICON. Um, then we've got Brad, our CEO, who uh, kind of heads up, obviously, the business and all the product provider relationships. Myself, who is head of marketing and product research. And then Sam, who's joining us today, a lot of you might know her and work with her. She's our, or one of our solution specialists at ICON, and she'll really be bringing our example and our case study to life today. Um, and she'll kind of illustrate what she actually does on a day-to-day -day, uh, level when, when working with advisors. So hopefully for those of you who are looking in at ICON, you can actually get a bit of a taste about, around what we do. Okay, so why does ICON exist? So the, the, the kind of key insight um, that drives us at ICON is that there are simply too many people that live in constant financial stress uh, around their financial circumstance. Um, and I think this is all too elevated in, in our current kind of economic circumstance, but that means that they actually or clients actually need their financial advisor more than ever to make sure that their planning is as savvy and efficient as possible. Our greater vision is to help people achieve financial freedom. And really that's about choice. So we often talk about the, I mean, we're gonna go into it now, the, the scary reality of how few South Africans can actually afford to retire. But the reality is that, that many people don't want to retire um, and working, you know, there's all the studies of, around how working is actually really good for you. And, and obviously you can contribute to society for longer and all those good things. But the point is that people are, are wa wanting to have choice and we want to change this absurdity in the market that people are actually worth more dead than alive and not are not able to live with the freedom that they should and um, if their financial planning was done responsibly so our mission is to democratize great financial advice delivering the best value to customers so that's how we've kind of made our our vision practical and really it's around pure purely good financial planning and good advice so a lot of people have asked us, are you, you know, is Icon going into the robo advice space or, or um, you know, going to be potentially going direct to customer? And our core belief is that advice needs to be tailored to every client. And that the reality is that a client needs an advisor to walk them through the process and, and often introduce them to the whole world of insurance and investment. Um, and very few people actually initiate that process by themselves. So practically, we want to enable you to give informed holistic advice to clients um, and on the client side, help them get the best product fit, value for money and the most effective use of premium, which will ultimately free our funds for wealth creation. And we'll really be unpacking this in the session today 
and uh, around how annual reviews is critical to make that um, happen. Okay, so, so I'll briefly touch on three key statistics uh, that, that really inspire us on a, on a day to day kind of level. These are macro stats, but, but really ones that I think that uh, if, if ICON reaches enough advisors and has enough of an influence on the market, we can really start to ship this. So the first one is the, is the amount of people who simply cannot afford to retire. Um, and in their kind of older years are still heavily in debt. Um, and, and again, we'll be, we'll be talking practically about how we think annual reviews can shift the statistic. Um, but then paradoxically, in the older age groups, clients are heavily overinsured. Um, and the True South Gap study talks about how this is around 200%. Um, and Brad will talk to kind of the, the lump sum patterns and, and how that, if, if untouched, will, will basically keep increasing. And if your annual review isn't done properly, that will just naturally keep growing. So you're paying all this money when your needs should be actually decreasing closer to retirement ages, but um, it's just gone up and up um, and uh, clients are paying these huge amounts for, for this lump sum cover. And then lastly, um, over 75% of all new business in South Africa is sold to the same clients. So that really speaks to, to the fact that advisors and, and the market are, are kind of speaking to the same people and we're not bringing enough clients, new clients into the market. Um, and one of the things that we want to do through ICON is make it financially viable for advisors to speak to more clients and, and potentially your, your lesser high net worth or your, your, your kind of more middle-class clients um, so that we can actually start shifting these macro trends and uh, statistics. Cool, so the last thing I'm just gonna to touch on is, is the old versus new model. Um, uh, in terms of the traditional, this, this is a picture of the traditional broker consultant model where each product provider employs an army of VCs that are effectively paid to be product pushers and, um, you know, bombard advisors weekly with, with, you know, why their products are best and, and why the advisor should kind of choose that, that quote over another. Um, and, and while, you know, no discredit to broker consultants, I've got the utmost respect um, for, for these, you know, experts, but the, the reality is that the, the financial advisor is independent and aligned to the client's uh, needs and, and, uh, um, and kind of is pure to that. But the broker consultants inherently are, advice to the product provider they're representing and what often happens with advisors is they'll kind of give a, a bit of of business to each broker consultant and then sometimes the client actually isn't getting the best uh, solution for them or the advisor simply cannot know what what is true or what isn't true or there's just too much too much information around each product to actually know uh at all for themselves. So what we try and do at ICON is, is shift this, this whole model on its head. And instead of being kind of tied to, to um, one product provider, ICON is independent, independently owned. There's no kind of shareholding from the product providers that we are aligned to. Um, and so we align to the independent nature of an IFA and a client-centric or yeah, customer-centric approach. Um, and in the context of annual reviews, while this is, I think, an, a really important point to make, is with every product provider that your client may, may be linked to or may have a policy with, there's a, there's a policy date where that's issued and that's where the product provider kind of triggers a, an annual review, but that might not be the holistic client annual review date and that might not align to your process. So really what ICON wants to do from an annual review process 
is aligned to your client and your review calendar and help you look at that from a holistic, completely product agnostic object uh, point of view. All right, that's enough of me for this morning. I'm going to hand over to Brad and he'll walk you through uh, the, next, <laughs> the next kind of step and, and kind of set up the, the reason why we're so passionate about annual reviews and, and how we want to work with you. And then Sam will take you through a really practical case study. Thanks. Thanks, Grace. Morning, everybody. So the, the topic of annual reviews is, I guess it's one of those subjects that we always talk about and have become, it, it's, it, it's just become a to-do list. Um, and, and often something that's engaged with rather reluctantly, um, more out of a compliance obligation rather than a, a real excitement about the opportunity it provides. And that's one of the things that we are trying to fundamentally change is we'd love to, as Icon, be able to work closely with you to turn those annual review conversations from something that you have in your calendar that you have to tick off to something that actually drives, fundamentally drives the behavior in your practice. So in discussions with advisors over the past months and, 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 and even further back over the past years, here are some of the insights we've picked up. And the first one is that annual reviews are often dreaded. And it's because the fear is that this conversation can trigger a cancellation or a clawback, or reviews often take a huge amount of effort and the reward to yourselves, the advisor is limited. And often reviews require ongoing am amendments, which can be admin intensive. Uh, I can only imagine the frustration of going through a complete review process, having a three hour meeting. And the thing that comes out of that meeting is uh, a 50 Rand increase on the premium and then it triggers another underwriting requirement. So typically this is how the advice process goes. I mean, an advisor meets a client, complete a thorough comprehensive financial needs analysis. You then take that request quotes from all of your broker consultants, you meet the client again, you present, and in the perfect world, one of the quotes or the provider is selected with either the best value or the cheapest premium. Without an annual review process though, the cycle stops there. And often this cover is left unchecked and results in overinsurance in the future. And this is borne out by the statistics that Grace touched on earlier that in South Africa in the 55 and over year old age group, South Africans have twice as much life cover in place as they actually need. Finally, for us, is, is one of the, the things driving this, um, this kind of situation in the market is the type of cover that's put in place. And historically, the South African industry, much like the life industry worldwide, has shown to our point, to our view, an over-reliance on lump sum benefits. Lump sum cover, when put in place, typically increases annually. And without a thorough annual review process, which is by itself admin intensive, is often left unchecked and continues to increase every year to the point where as your clients approach retirement, they're left overinsured. The beautiful thing about income benefits is that a lot of this is taken care of by the nature of the benefit itself. So an income benefit, much like the ultimate need of your clients, tends towards zero as you, as you approach retirement. It perfectly matches the actual need that we believe is in place. Whereas lump sum benefits work in exactly the opposite direction. And typically, again, what's been happening in the market is that a com beautiful comprehensive FNA is presented. Your client's unable to afford to afford the complete solution, takes less than the perfect amount of cover, and is underinsured in the younger ages and ends up overinsured in the older ages. And this is the final consequence of all of that, is that only 6% of South Africans are able to afford to retire at 65. And there is an entire argument about whether 65 is even the relevant age to be using as a benchmark. But wherever you set, wherever you set that number, the reality is the vast majority of South Africans, even those who have been responsible for their entire working life, reach retirement age or the, the age when they would like to stop working are unable to do so. So what we're trying to do is, is drive two key changes to this traditional advice process. The first one is that throughout, we encourage a combination of income and lump sum benefits. 
There are a number of advantages to this. The first one is it gives you more sustainable premiums and cover. It, we believe it perfectly matches the client's actual need, which decreases over time. And these premiums and these savings are then freed up to invest and save for wealth creation, which ultimately is our responsibility as an industry. The other thing that we bring is the ability to leverage the best of breed providers within our icon stable. And this is probably the greatest example of what Grace was explaining, that as a product agnostic independent business, we don't behave like product pushers and we're able to really bring the best of breed solutions to you and often recommend a proposal that might be a combination of many of our product provider partners at the same time. This gives you the ability to tailor make a proposal for your client. It means that various risk needs are often covered by more than one product provider, but ultimately this gives you better claim certainty and premium sustainability. So we really and truly believe that annual reviews done properly will be able to shift these scary statistics. Currently, there's twice as much life cover being sold in the market as disability. When, I mean, intuitively, we all understand that it should be the other way around. If you pass away, you only need to leave enough money to provide for your family. Whereas if you're disabled and unable to work, you need to look after yourself as well as your family. On average, clients, over the age of 55 is twice as much life cover as they need. This is an extension of the first point, but again, speaks to this idea that as an industry, we've been successful at making people worth more dead than alive. And that is the one thing that I would love to change about this industry. I'd like to never hear that conversation said at a brow with my friends again. I don't want anyone to ever say with some sort of perverted pride that I'm worth more dead than alive, because that's not the point. The point of our industry is to allow people to live amazing lives with financial freedom and provide for themselves and for their loved ones. And we need to make sure that they're able to live that life and not only be worth something if they pass away. And finally, shifting the focus from lump sum benefits to income benefits first and foremost, well, not foremost, first as a priority, I think, again, will fundamentally change many of these uh, statistics we're talking about today. So what are the opportunities that come out of these annual reviews? Firstly, there are money-making opportunities. And I know that's a crude way to put it, but there are opportunities to grow value in your practice, to increase your assets under management, and to generate revenue. Secondly, and, and probably most importantly, there's an opportunity to add serious value to your client's future. Share by using Icon's rebalancing concept and by sticking to our, our risk risk guidance framework, we believe you're able to save up to 30% on your client's risk premiums. Every cent of that can then be reallocated towards savings and planning for retirement. And finally, we want to take the stress. We want to take the admin out of this process. We want to make it viable for you to conduct a thorough annual review with every single one of the clients in your practice, not just the high net worth individuals. And we've created a set of tools and a support team there to help you drive this entire process for you. It starts with having a will and a state plan in place. And again, it's a terrifying statistic that only one in five South Africans actually have a valid will. The beautiful thing about this is not only is it necessary to do, but it's also the greatest way to capture updated information about your client, about their beneficiaries and about their financial circumstances. That information can then be used to drive the annual review process. Icon works very, very closely with Capital Legacy, and we obviously highly recommend them. But each of you may have your own solutions for this. For us, from a philosophical point of view, we just fundamentally believe that it's a great way to start. With this updated information, we're able to put it through Icon's risk guidance framework. And then we will do all the research on your behalf. Take those set of needs, Take the updated and changed circumstances of your client and find the best match for that in the market from working with our full suite of product providers that we recommend. And we'll then put that proposal back to you. So there are four critical conversations that come out of here and opportunities that come with them. Firstly, I've already touched on this, is the will and the estate plan. And this is specific to capital legacy that there's both referral commission and fee sharing, which grows your practice value. 
There's an opportunity to fundamentally review the risk cover that your clients have in place. And not only is there an opportunity to rebalance the existing cover they have to a more optimal income-based solution, but often over time, both as a consequence of their, their circumstances changing and developments of products in the market, there are new solutions for needs that either previously never existed or have recently come up. There's again an opportunity in the same conversation to get ahead of the curve and have the medical aid review done now rather than waiting until December. And again, it seems like a funny thing to say, but we believe the critical illness calculator we've developed is a great support in this. So again, it's an, it's an example of where Icon really tries to take a completely holistic approach. For us, one of the critical factors in deciding how much critical illness cover needs to be in place is the quality and level of the medical aid that's in place. Those two interact with each other. And finally, as a consequence of doing these first three, there's an opportunity to look at the savings that have been created and really look at the investment and retirement plan that's in place. And again, is a chance here to get ahead. Let's get the retirement and RA contribution set now so that the February tax season is taken care of. And we, we, um, Sam, when she takes you through a case study in a few seconds, will give you examples of some of the outputs from FMI's retirement reality calculator. And this is such a wonderful tool that we think could apply in every single um, annual review. It's a really simple calculator to use. You put five inputs in, and what it does is it'll create that client's retirement reality calculator, but it describes it in a way that we believe makes it very accessible and relevant. It talks about how much you'll have at retirement, what percentage of your income you'll be able to live on, and put differently what age you would need to work until to actually be able to live on the income that you'd like to. And it also shows the impact of various risk events and what that could do to your retirement future. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Sam. I'll come back right at the end to, to, uh, to kind of close off. But um, Sam, as Grace introduced earlier, is, is one of our solution specialists. I say one. She is our best and most experienced one we have. And anyone who gets to work with Sam is very lucky. She does an incredible amount of research on your behalf. And when you get that solution, you can know that this has been thoroughly thought through and really well put together. So Sam, I'm gonna hand over to you. Give me two seconds while we switch over screens um, and then we, we should get back on track. Cool. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Right, you can see my screen? Yep. Fantastic. Cool. So I get the, the fun part of wrapping this up while Grace and Brad set everything up so beautifully for me. Um, so let's jump straight into it. So as a financial advisor, we know that when you do your f a you look at the client's finances holistically. But when it comes to splitting out how much of the premium spend goes to where, what do, you, what do you actually prioritize? Do you sell your client's policies to protect their balance sheet in the event of unexpected illnesses, injuries, or an untimely death? Or do you... Do you put towards building the wealth and financial freedom of your client. So to help us work this out, we've got Mark and Mitch. They are brothers, both 45 years old, earn around 60K each, similar occupations, two beautiful kids and a wife, 2 million rand debt on bond cover, which has a remaining term of 20 years. And they've also noted that they have a family history of cancer and their goal to retire is at, at age 60. According to the FNA, 
that the advisor has put together, the bulk of the premium for traditional lump sum cover is 6,000 6, and they would need a further 6,600 in order to put towards their retirement and savings. And, but there's always a but, they have a maximum budget of 10,000 Rand each. So if you have a look here, Mark's advisor has suggested that he put most of his budget towards his risk, or all his budget really, and then a remaining 4,000 Rand to his savings. Whereas Mitch's advisor has gone more the investment route and is, is asking him to put most of his money towards investments and just a smaller amount towards the risk. And if we look at how much they've already put it towards their savings, Mark is 1.5 million in his existing RA, and Mitch was a little bit more disciplined and he put 1.5. Okay, so which brother gets the better advice in this scenario? Mark's advisor recommended going the full lump sum risk route with a small amount put towards savings. He suggested that when Mark has extra cash flow, um, he can put more money towards his risk needs um, and that he can increase his saving contributions as he goes along. Mitch's advisor suggested focusing contributing the full amount towards his savings required and reducing the lump sum risk cover needed and mentioned to Mitch that, you know what, we can always increase this and review this on a yearly basis as you have more extra money, expendable money to use for this. So when we look at the quotations, the traditional lump sum cover was the, the full Monty. You've got the 13 mil disability, the 2 million dread disease, which was based on a two and a half times his annual salary and seven mil towards life cover where Mitch's advisor had to reduce the cover substantially to fit the budget so that he could incorporate that savings amount. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little um, fast forwarding by 15 years, so when Mark is supposed to retire. So Mark now forms part of the 94% of South Africans that cannot retire because um, he's 60 now, and if he's not really there yet, he's definitely not on track to retire. By 65 either. Um, he had an unexpected back surgery at age 50 due to a mountain biking accident and was unable to work for a period of time. But he wasn't deemed permanently disabled, so he couldn't claim from the 13 mil disability benefit that he had, and therefore he had to tap into his savings um, as he did not have any income protection in place. He has the lump sum cover is no longer needed as his debt has been paid off. Um, his kids have left the house, so that's significantly reduced. So he has this massive amount of cover that he actually doesn't really need anymore. And he can't really afford to keep it, but he's in a, in a spot where he spent, you spent these premiums for 15 years and now he decides to tell his advisor, you know what, let's just keep this cover as legacy cover because, you know, I've spent so much money on it already. Okay, and then what we did is, I know that Brad went through the calculator, the retirement, if my, if my, if my retirement calculator with you, um, but the most important figure here is that 48% of his salary post-retirement post until he's age 90, that's what he, that's what he has and he'll have full retirement is only 48%, which is grossly underinsured. And the reason being is obviously the structure hasn't been, um, the cover hasn't been structured correctly. Um, and also he, he basically yeah, ends up being underinsured here. So in this instance, 48%. Cool, then we move on to Mitch and we're gonna fast forward 15 years for Mitch too. And he's put a bulk of his budget towards the savings and a small amount towards his risk. And unfortunately, these brothers are very unlucky. He's also had an accident and he's unable to work for three months, which has started depleting his savings. So when we look at that, he originally had 75% of his post salary for retirement, uh, which is a fantastic number to work with. 
But because of this, this event that he wasn't insured against, because um, he didn't have income protection, he lost three months of his income, which correlates to 1.7 by mil by the age of 65. So he either needs to live on 6% less when he retires, so he's going to have to do massive lifestyle adjustments, or he's going to have to work for eight months past his chosen retirement age to make up for those three months lost income. And just another interesting stat from FMI is that once you've actually had a claim, you are three times more likely to claim again after that first first claim. And the, the, the thinking behind that is firstly, it, it's easier to claim than you think with specific companies. And you're at a greater risk of a related condition, which could result in a further depleting of your savings. So it's maybe not just that one sort of event that can just completely destroy it. It's, you know, what if there's something else that happens? Or what if there's complications and you have to go back to using that savings? All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna give Mark a little do-over. Uh, what a lucky guy. So we're gonna turn back time. So we've gone forward and now we're gonna turn back time. Um, and his advisor is now using the ICON rebalancing proposal. Okay, which is going to give a combination of income and lump sum benefits and best of breed products tailored for Mark. Okay, so ICON has already conducted objective research on all the products. They're, we're able to put together a best of breed solution by combining the income and lump sum cover to ensure premium efficiencies and sustainability as well as yeah, future sustainabilities of premiums um, so that the advisor can take that premium saving and put it towards retirement. So what, what we do during the ICON process, uh, which I think Grace uh, touched on earlier, is that during our research, we'll, we'll have a look at the client's risk profile, their specific risk profile as a, a male smoker at the age or non-smoker at the age of 45. Um, and we've made use of this FMI risk reality tool, which helps the advisor take an emotive conversation to a practical, visual, document-based. And this document is based on 26 years of claims experience. So for Mark, he is 85% more likely to claim on a temporary illness or injury than he is going to be claiming on any other event. Yet as it stands in the original proposal, he doesn't have any income protection, although he's 85% more likely to claim on income protection. And in fact, he did with that motor, that motorcycling or yeah, motorbiking event that he had. All right, so this is the final proposal that you would get with ICON and which we would have done for Mark's advisor. So Mark's advisor would come to us and he's basically done his f &A. He's got all the income needs. He's got all the assets and liabilities. And he's basically taken the amounts and he's worked out what the lump sum value is of everything based on assumptions. And now he knows this is what he wants to put together. So he asks Icon for their, their solution. So firstly, we look at the traditional cover. We've got the 12.7, the 2.1, and the 7 mil life cover. Um, but then uh, client B, which was originally Mitch, he couldn't afford the full solution. So um, what, what we had to do is we had to reduce the cover significantly, significantly to get to that point. Um, but obviously, um, Mark was more open to spending more money in the scenario, so we decided to do an icon rebalance so solution for him. So what you're finding here is we're able to cover Mark for, for his full net income, um, which is fantastic because if he claims, he's going to be able to replace 100% of his income. Um, and then we look at the waiting periods. We're able to offer him a split waiting period of seven and 14 days because the shorter the wait waiting period, the more the probability of claiming, especially when you're looking at a claimable event like temporary income protection, where it is the most likely claimable event, you want to have a shorter waiting period so that you can claim soonest. Then what we've done is we've looked at the 
the lump sum disability and we have accelerated a portion of the life lump sum for his bond cover and termed it for 20 years. Um, you'll also note that on the extended income protection, there is a 10.7 mil equivalent present value. So we are definitely not taking away from the 12.7 million that he was originally quoted on his FNA. We're just basically restructuring and rebalancing it. And then finally, what we've done is we split out the critical illness needs into income-based needs and lump sum needs, as well as adding a standalone, amazing comprehensive benefit that will basically boost his cancer claims because he was very worried about the, the family history of cancer. So that was the niche solution that we introduced over there. And finally, when it came to life, life cover, we've split it up again according to the debt needs and the income needs. And again, the present value of the life income need is definitely not pulling and taking away from the original F&A. All right, so finally what you would receive on a ICON proposal is you'd have a look at the premium projections, which is obviously extremely important. And if you look over here, you can see that there is a massive premium saving when using the ICON solution. Um, so the upfront saving is around 38% in this scenario by, the re by restructuring. And if we look at the savings over time, um, and we basically illustrated that um, at a 10% interest, interest earned over that um, period, we're looking at a 2.3 mil saving just by using the rebalancing structure. So you're getting an upfront saving and you're getting an overall projected saving, which could be used upfront to start putting towards your retirement and savings. And I mean, if you look at the previous graphs that Brad um, showed you with the premium wastage that you had over here, you're almost swapping out the premium wastage for premium savings. And then the final thing I would like to illustrate here is if you look at the average increase over the periods of time. So not only was the rebalanced more affordable upfront, it had premium savings. If you look at the average increases over time, it's also lower. You're looking at a 9.3 and the rebalanced is 7.7. .7, and then over a 15 year period, a 12.15 and 10.18. 10, which is quite substantial and it's really, really important because when you re you're reaching post-retirement and you want to keep certain benefits that are going to form a part of your retirement planning, such as your some critical illness cover and your, your whole of life needs, your for estate duty and um, the cost of dying, you wanna make sure that that is still going to be sustainable moving forward. So that's why those numbers are really important. So now let's look at the new improved mark. So now mark at age 65, um, he is now forming part of the 6% of South Africans who can retire. Hopefully by, by helping mark retire, we are increasing that number incrementally. Um, he has financial freedom. He doesn't have to risk lump sum that he's holding onto, but doesn't need. When he needed to, he claimed on his income protection policy and that helped him protect his monthly income and his savings contributions. And now Mark is not worth more dead than alive, which is fantastic. Okay, and just to, uh, to finish off, by rebalancing cover with ICON, you're looking at lean cost-effective solutions that will be extremely tricky to replace in the future. You're looking at the most sustainable premiums to maximize clients' wealth over time, best future insurability, which is really, really important when it comes to doing your reviews. Um, if you have really good future insurability built into a product, that means you're able to increase cover, move cover as the client's needs change, and it makes your review process so much easier as an advisor um, because you don't have to go through all the underwriting and you know, all the, the stress about doing a new application. It's just as easy as increasing your cover on an annual basis for your medical underwriting. And even if you've claimed. 
flexibility and use of niche solutions for the client profile. And that's where we use the standalone cancer benefits um, to really talk to the actual client's needs, which will form a basis of your record of advice for your client. So really just making sure the product is suited to the client's every need and that it moves with the client's needs as they grow. Cool, that is me. Thank you so much. And I will be passing you back to Brad. Thanks so much, Sammy. Um, I will remove you as a speaker. There we go. Yeah, okie dokes. Okay, I'm back. Thanks, everyone. I've got only a few minutes to wrap up, but I'm, I'm happy to, um, as I'm closing off, take any questions or comments that anyone might have as well. So just to kind of close it with an image, really for me, the, the entire advice process, and, and Grace opened up by saying that what, what drives Icon is the idea of democratizing great financial advice. And we fundamentally believe that every single person is better off if they're able to access quality, independent financial planning and advice. And that's why we exist to enable yourselves as advisors to be able to do exactly that. So if we take a typical journey of someone, you're coming in, you start working, you're younger, you haven't really had the opportunity to build any wealth yet or put any money away for savings. You haven't grown your balance sheet. You haven't created any assets. And that's the time when you are most at risk. That's when your need for risk cover is at its highest. You need to protect your future, future plans and dreams from any of the bad things that could happen to you. So I often use the analogy that for me, risk cover is around protecting your income statement, protecting your income stream, and wealth creation or savings is around growing your balance sheet. As your balance sheet strengthens, you have less need for risk cover and less need to protect your future income stream. So over a typical time period, the, the perfect scenario is as you get closer to retirement, your need for risk cover tends towards zero because you've filled up your bucket. You've added to your savings, you've grown wealth, you've created assets, and your balance sheet is now strong enough to provide for your future. The process of moving from A to B is really the annual review process is the glue that holds all of that together. And that's the process where you're able to look at it every single year, understand what in the circumstance your clients have changed, figure out maybe there are better quality products out there, new developments, new solutions available, and make sure that every single point in time between entry and retirement, your client has the best possible cover available at the lowest possible price. And only making sure that the risk cover is that lean and mean throughout and optimally, optimally matched, are you able to then allocate as much possible, as much money as possible to savings and wealth creation. And for us, our risk guidance framework enables you to do exactly that. Typically over the course of a lifetime of a policyholder, you're gonna save anything between 20 to 30% of those premiums. And again, that fundamentally changes how much you're able to put in the wealth bucket and it changes the retirement future of your clients. So that's a micro example for one particular client. If we bring it to a typical advisor with an average size practice, Let's say you have an advisor with 200 clients, average age of 45, paying on average 2,500 grand risk premiums. This is not a particularly aggressive example. It's not a particularly conservative one. So in total, there are 500,000 rand a month, half a million rand a month in risk premiums that are being managed. By rebalancing and by reviewing those risk cover, th those risk premiums, we can extract at least 100,000 rand a month in savings. That's assuming a 20% saving that money is then able to be invested and saved. And over the lifetime of this portfolio should add over 200 million to your assets and under management. And that for us is the opportunity of a rigorous, carefully thought through annual review process. Your entire practice is one year away from being shifted to this future. And that's where Icon wants to step in and help you and make sure that that is as easy as possible to do. So let's change the reality where annual review processes are feared, where reviews are seen to take huge amount of effort with very little reward. 
and they require ongoing amendments which can be admin intensive. We wanna show your clients the real value, things that other advisors simply won't be able to do and means that their policies become unchurnable. This also allows you to grow your assets under management significantly as your client builds investments and savings. And we can take all the pain away or most of the pain away. You can mitigate the admin and you can work smart with Icon. We can step in and be your back office. We can be your annual review team. There's a beautiful Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And, and it is a, it, it, I always feel sometimes uncomfortable finishing with a cheesy quote, but for me, there's no better quote that speaks to the message we're trying to get across now. The beautiful thing about an annual review is it means you always have an opportunity to update and review the covers that's in place. And the Mitches and Marks, we have an opportunity every single year to have a conversation with them and update their portfolio, review the cover they have in place and make sure that we keeping it, keep it pace with the best that's available out there. And I've, and I've said it many, many times, but we have an Icon team ready and waiting to support you in any way you can. For those of you who have worked with Icon for a period of time, we thank you for your support and we hope we're going to get to work with you throughout 2022 and make it a calendar year where this annual review process really becomes embedded in your practice. For those of you who are new to Icon or maybe hearing about us for the first time, we'd love to have the opportunity just to, to show what we can do and put it into practice. Let us help you prepare for the next client that you're seeing. Let us take you through the process. Let's show you what Sam and the team are capable of doing and putting the kind of proposals that we know we can deliver for you. And if we can do this together, and really this is the whole thing about Icon, is that we believe that this is a beautiful industry that has so much potential, that could be doing so much more than it already is. But the power lies with the independent financial advisor. That's the way these conversations happen with the clients. That's where clients are affected and that's where clients are, are influenced. And that's why Icon exists, is to support each of you. We can only do this through partnering with you and building up that kind of head of steam and that, that, that shift of momentum in the market. And that's it from us. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really hope that, that something useful has come out of it. Um, at the very least, it's a reminder. Um, best case scenario, it's given you a couple of really great ideas. And uh, we look forward to being able to work with you. I've got a couple of comments. Most of them, um, most of them saying, uh, thanks, Ben. Appreciate your time as well. Very, very cool to get that feedback. And a couple of comments about Sam's picture, <laughs> which, um, I mean, I thought my picture looked all right as well, but I'm, that's fine. Okay, for those of you who need to go, um, again, thank you very much. I'll stick around for a few minutes if there are any questions. Otherwise, have, a, have an amazing day and, and uh, have a lovely long weekend as well. Thank you.